In today's video, we are going to show you every radar scope tier 1 and tier 2 feature. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we're going to start off in archive mode, which is a tier 2 feature. But we're going to use that to kind of help showcase some of the tier 1 features as well. Alright, so the first feature that we're going to show you is lightning. So lightning basically just shows you these little lightning icons. We'll zoom in on this one, see a couple of strikes of lightning. This uses the lightning network across the United States to detect lightning strikes and then that data is fed into radar scope. Alright, so the next thing we'll talk about are animations or radar loops. So let's go ahead and press play. And you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of empty space there. So next I'm going to show you how to change how many radar loops you get. To change how many uh, frames are in your radar loop when you hit the play button, come over here, you go to radar frame count, and then you can pick up to 30 if you're on tier 1, tier 2 will be 50. Next feature is going to be tornado and severe thunderstorm watches. I can't show you that because it doesn't have historical data, but it basically shows the tornado or severe thunderstorm watch box on your screen. Special weather statements, I don't think they're are any right now there are not so I can't show you those but it basically just shows you a little blue box for a special weather statement so you also get local storm reports and you're able to choose which of the storm reports you want you can pick between specific ones funnel cloud lightning tornado wind etc or you can show all and then you get custom color palettes you can choose whichever one you want reflectivity so you can do low filter you can do expert mode and you've got all these other options and then you can also build your own which we may show you in a separate video you can also do the same for any of the other products that are listed here the next thing we're going to show you is the multi-pane display this is available for tier one so this is very useful if you need to see two things at once so i'm going to go ahead and switch this is the matador supercell so you just tap on the little uh, window looking icon down there and it'll give you two different screens and then you can move them around as necessary. Let's go ahead and play this back. And you can scrub through it by pressing and hold the play icon of course. And then you can see here we've got an obvious tornado with uh, really bright reds and really bright greens. But it's easiest to see whenever you have the dual paint and display so if that's what you're looking for tier one is for you let's go ahead and talk about tier two so we already covered that you can get up to 50 frames in your loops so I won't show you that one again level two radar data with all tilts so let's go ahead and describe that one for you you come over here to the product selection tool and you can scroll all the way down and you can pick Nexrad level 2 and that's what that's talking about you can pick reflectivity velocity and these other different ones and it gives you level 2 radar data which is a lot more data intensive than the other ones oh no it takes forever to download but it gives you every tilt whereas if you go up here to just this notice it's much faster and you only have four tilts that's why it takes long because it's downloading a lot more data that is level 2 radar data with every tilt you also get archived radar data between 30 days and 28 years uh, in order to do that you can tap the time down in the lower right hand corner and then you can pick a date from any time in the past up to i think 1991 it looks like let's go ahead and cover mrms that's the next item on the tier 2 list so up here at the top where it says klbb lubbock or in your case it may be different you can tap on it come down to composites then select multi radar multi sensor system and then you can uncheck that and it will show you radar across the country notice it's not nearly as high a resolution but it is nice if you want to see the radar across the entire country at once for example down here in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas we've got some uh, showers going on so MRMS is very useful if you want to get a quick overview of all the weather across the country. Next we're going to talk about GOES satellite. So you come up here, go to satellites, and then you can pick GOES East, GOES East Meso 1, Meso 2, which are very very small areas. 
I'm just going to go ahead and pick Goes East Conus. And that's going to show us all of the satellite for the entire contiguous United States. You can select different bands. It's got pretty much all of them available. I like to use Clean Long Wave, but since this is daytime, I can pick band 2 red, which I think looks nicer than blue. And then you can see the visible satellite. And then I'll go ahead and play it. And you can see clouds streaming across the southern portion of Texas. The next thing we'll talk about, and that is atmospheric soundings. So we'll go back to data sources, tap on soundings, and let's pick one from Texas. If you press and hold your finger over on the little abbreviations for the state, you can scroll through them faster. Let's do Fort Worth. All right, so this is an atmospheric sounding. We can go into this in depth later, but this gives you all of the atmospheric data. And essentially an atmospheric sounding is when they take the balloon, they release the balloon up into the atmosphere and it records temperature, dew point, and wind. So that's the atmospheric soundings, which is very useful for us weather nerds. Let's go ahead and talk about SPC outlooks and mesoscale discussions. Let's go here. Let's pick categorical outlooks and click done. And then it'll give you some uh, lines on the screen indicating different levels of the severe thunderstorm outlook. In this particular case, there are no severe storm forecasts, so all we have is a general thunderstorm in portions of western New Mexico and portions of Arizona. The next thing is wind shear and hail contours. So let's go into archive mode. Go here. Let's go pick June of 2023. I want to pick a date. I want to pick the 21st. 8, 10 p.m. This is the Matador tornado. Now, what are wind shear and hail contours. Well, let's go ahead and show you what the wind shear contours are. You go into storms and then derived contours under layers. And you can pick hail size, azimuthal shear or hail probability. I'm gonna go ahead and pick shear, but you can pick whichever one you like. So that's your shear. Let's actually look at uh, hail size. So you can see pretty large hail size down by Aspermont, Rotan, Hamlin, and then over here it was still large, but not nearly as large uh, in terms of hail size. So that's very useful um, when you're out in the field or if you just want to know if there's going to be large hail hitting your house. There's hail probability. It shows you the probability of severe hail. Very useful information. The next thing is the road layer. And you can go back and you can turn roads on. Now you have roads. So let's go over here to Lubbock and then you can see all the different roads. Very useful if you're out storm chasing, it gives you uh, more roads as you zoom in. So you can kind of know where you are. The other thing that you get with tier two is the satellite layer. And then the last feature for tier two is cross-platform subscription sharing. So it allows me to use this on Windows or Android or whatever the case may be if I have tier two. That is it for all of the tier one and tier two features. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos on RadarScope, our live streams, or any other videos we have coming up in the future. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. See you on the next one.